Hello, my name is Tim Baldrige. I'm a developer with Cognitect, and today I want to talk a little bit about um, extending core logic. So uh, this is, I got a lot of this information from an article that I'll link in the description of this video. Um, it, it's a little bit of an older article, but um, I, I really liked it. It was a, a blog post about how to um, add um, your own sort of um, querying system to, to core logic. So if you ha want to take core logic and use it to query a, a database or some sort of custom database or system like that, then um, this is kind of what this uh, tutorial is about. Um, it'll be a quick one today, um, so uh, let's, let's get started. So to start with, um, what we're going to do today is we're going to load a database of zip codes and show a relationship between cities and zip codes and use core uh, logic to uh, query that. Um, so uh, first we do, the thing we do is import core logic um, as well as the protocols namespace because we need this little symbol called walk. And then we're going to, the rest of this is for uh, interop. So what I have here is um, I went and downloaded this CSV file um, that has all the zip codes in it. And uh, what we're going to do is just define a function that reads in that zip code, um, goes through the lines, pulls out two fields, the city and zip, and then indexes them in two separate ways. So if we define a var called db, um, it'll load up our database. And now we can say, go into the db, um, find our city zip relationship, and get the city named Dallas. And so here's all the zip codes for uh, Dallas. And we can go the opposite way. We have a given zip code, and we can get the city for it. So for this given zip code, the city is Dallas. And you see here, all we're doing is um, reducing and making a hash map of one to the other. So now, let's say we want to use core logic to query the system, right? Um, so we're going to create a relationship called zip codo, um, and uh, this returns a function. Now, if you've seen my other videos where we talk about um, core async and kind of the way it's built out, you'll remember we talked about the state monad. Well, it just so happens that core logic also follows the state monad. So um, pretty much all of the primitives in core logic return a function that takes an argument that we, by convention, called A. And what it kind of is is a, is a place to go up and look into and see, do we, for a given uh, logic variable, do we know what this logic variable is, or what the possible values of the logic variable are? So in this case, um, I, the way I like to look at this is to say, we're going to, uh, down here in our, in our run, um, we are going to provide one constant to start with. And our constant is the zip code, 75356. And we want to find what the queue is. We're going to query uh, what the city is for this zip code. So, most of the time, I consider this code here to be boilerplate. And that is what we do is we go and we take two variables, which in the case down here is going to be a constant and a logic variable, variable um, run the stuff in run and in fresh, like we see down here, um, create logic variables, which are kind of placeholders that we can, um, which are, are different query functions can unify with data and provide one value or multiple values. So what we need to do is we, we go and we have zip code and city, and then we're going to walk, and we say go into A and walk for zip and for city. And this will either return a logic variable or a actual closure value that we can use. So um, in the case where we actually have in another part of our logic program defined what zip is, this will convert the logic variable zip into a um, into an actual value. And in the case where it can't, it hasn't unified it with anything yet, it'll return a logic variable. So what we do is a little bit of pattern matching here. What we're gonna say is we're gonna create a vector of true and false, if it's a, a actual closure value or not. And we do that by saying, is it a logic var, and then the inverse of that. So if zip code is not a logic var, but, false, but, but uh, city is, well, then it's pretty easy. We say unify, and uh, unify takes the argument of our, of our um, substitution uh, map, as it's called. Um, we, get, we say unify city with, and we dig down and get the city for a given zip code. Right? Just It's the same code we had up here. So for a given um, zip code, we're going to get the city. And this unify says, OK, now associate city with this value that we're going to get out of our, our fake database. 
So now if we go down here and we say run star for the zip code, um, we haven't actually defined, there we go. Now we can run this and we say, hey, we got Dallas. Great. So can we do the inverse of that? Can we say run star for Q uh, zip code O and Q and can we run that? No, we can't because we don't have a matching clause for false and true, um, which would be that zip is still a logic var and we know what city is, right? Now this is this is the interesting thing. This is what I really like about core logic is that it allows us for things in our in our code where we have a relation between data. We can we don't have to do just two. We could have any number of, of variables here. Um, we could even have this be a um, uh, a variable length uh, a variable arity function, and we could have some sort of other complex uh, way of of um, unifying these variables. But if we had some sort of relationship in our code. Um, we can express that in a simple um, function like this, and depending on what, which things are LVARs and not, we can bind them in different ways and, and, uh, and look at our code relation, relationally. Yes. So let's uncomment this section here. And this says, if the zip code is an LVAR and the city is not, then what we're going to do is we're going to get all the zip codes for a given city. So if you remember up here, when we said get everything for Dallas, we, we had a whole set of values returned. And then for each one of those, we're going to unify them, uh, unify the zip code with the value. So now we got a um, kind of a lazy sequence of, of unifications. And we need to convert that into something that um, core logic can understand. And by doing that, we say to stream. So if we define this, redefine this, and then say, find me all the zip codes for Dallas, what do you know? We get this sequence of all the possible queues where the city is Dallas. Now, this is pretty cool. Um, and um, because I, what I like about this is we've only, we've been able to do all of this with only a, a small set of um, primitives. That is walk, LVAR, unify, and two strings. Using that, we can do all sorts of fun um, uh, unifications and, and, and kind of query all sorts of different data sets. Um, I used to come from a, um, I came from a C-sharp background, and in C-sharp we have something called link. And with link, you can kind of do some, some um, nice query systems where you can go in and, and, um, and uh, link will provide you with kind of an abstract syntax tree that you can parse out. And if you have a, a more efficient way of querying a data set, you can do that. Um, but the result is pretty, pretty clunky. Um, there's not a real good way to say, you know what, I have this data set that is indexed in these certain ways. And now I want to um, drive some sort of query engine um, based off this data. So now um, let's do something a little bit different. Let's say we're going to define a temporary value here called x, and we're going to say x is a member of this uh, vector. So x is either Dallas or Denver, and um, we want to, we're going to take this out temporarily, and we want to get all the zip codes that are either in Denver or Dallas. So this is like a, a, a join, um, or actually a, it'd be a where clause with an or in it in SQL, um, where it's one or the other. And we can, like I had before, filter this, saying where also uh, Q is this value. And if we run this, ah, we have another exception. It says no matching clause true true. And in this case, this is interesting, because neither one of our variables are logic variables anymore. We know what they are. If we look down here, it'll say X is Dallas. And now Q is this value, or X is Denver, and Q is 75356, right? And so we'll, by the time this gets to zip code O, it already has all of the, um, the data it needs, and all we need to do is just check that, that that association is valid. And the way we do that is that if the association succeeds, if it's, if it's true that this zip code is in Dallas, then we return the substitution without any changes to it. Otherwise, we can return nil to say, nope, this is a dead end. This uh, unification didn't work. So if we redefine our function and then rerun our query, 
we see that we get 75356, which says that 75356 is either a zip code of Dallas or Denver, right? And if we were to take one of these out and say, hey, is it a member of Denver? Oh, no, it's not. Is it a member of Dallas? Well, yes, it is. So the empty set here means that the, the query failed. Um, right, and so uh, right now this, this is a pretty simple example, right? Because we only have three clauses. The other clause that I didn't put in here is false and false, which would basically say, um, you know, if we were to use zip codo at the top here, it would say, um, uh, if we were to run this, move it up here, um, the nice thing about logic programs is you can kind of run them in any order, but we get a, a no matching clause false and false. Because in this case, we have to unify it with all possible values. That, that, that zip can be anything and city can be anything, right? And so we would actually have this really large um, uh, substitution map where we have taken every possible zip code in the United States and its relationship to every city and kind of stuck it into the substitution map. And that's, that's a little bit ugly. Um, um, now this is, this is lazy, um, so it may not actually end up being that big, but it, it's not that efficient. So this is something where we kind of want to start at the, um, queries that will, that will, um, shall we say, uh, reduce our possibilities as quick as possible. So this is kind of a good query. We say we have one city, we have one zip code, and then we can just make one hit against our database to say, is it there or not? Um, but this is a great, I, I think this is a uh, really cool concept because we could unify this against all sorts of different things. Um, there's an example in CoreLogic of going up against uh, Datomic where you can query Datomic with CoreLogic. It's not quite as fast as the data log um, engine, but uh, um, you can do it. Um, but, you know, you could, you could think of situations where maybe we go against a web API and query um, uh, who are, uh, what actors acted in what movies, and um, then use that relationship to do something like say um, how many movies has one actor been in with another actor or how many degrees of separation is there between uh, one actor and another and we can just keep going from there. Um, the example I'm going to link at the bottom, um, an article uh, that talks about this more, uses it as a graph, um, uh, a library for, uses this as a system for querying a, um, a graph of vertexes with uh, lines between those vertexes, um, the vertices. So uh, yeah, that's about all I had. I think this is kind of cool. Um, it's a fun thing to try and uh, come up with new, new sources of data to uh, query this way. And uh, yeah, hopefully this was helpful to someone. Thanks.